What's up guys? So today in this video, what we're going to be going through is e-signature templates to be used in e-signature automation. So I'm going to be showing you how to create the whole template with signer fields, as well as with placeholder fields and where you might want to sign as well. Uh, we'll talk about all that all about that in the video, but if you haven't met me before, my name is Ben Green. I'm the owner of Optimize IS. What we do is we help business owners optimize their information systems. So that's stuff from Airtable, for CRM or asset management, Asana for project management, Slack for communications, as well as Zapier and Integrama to connect all of those together. But today, we're gonna to be going through e-signature automation. So as you can see here, we are in e-signatures.io and I've evaluated a lot of these e-signature platforms and this one seems to be the best for the API, specifically, specifically for the API pricing to get this all automated in your business. So you can go check out the pricing models on your own. I'll go into that in a later video, but for this video, we're just gonna be going through how to create a template. So if we come up here to the templates, all you have to do is you have to just go create an account, I think verify your email, and then it'll bring you to like this. So I just created a new account for this and you can basically it says how to start, send a, send a test contract, create your template, add your branding, set up payments. But what you wanna do is you just wanna come up here to templates. And so you can come in here and there'll be two templates already in here. So I'll show you those, but I'm gonna upload a new one to show you what that looks like. So if you come in here, you can see this is like all the text. Uh, there's like these green fields. I'm gonna be explaining those. There's more green fields. There's a checkbox and some other, there's like options for signature places. So I won't go into that specific template, but I'm going to add a new one in here from my desktop and do the drop down. So what you wanna do is you wanna have a Word doc with the text, or you can just copy and paste the text. So I'm gonna go copy the text now from my Word doc. All right, so I just went and copied it. And so now we'll start with a blank template. And so in here, you might wanna put, so for this one, we're gonna be doing a consulting service agreement. So consulting service agreement. And I'm, I wouldn't say use this template, I would say go go to your lawyer that you use in your business and have them make you a template or use one that you already have and have them approve it, make some additions to it. I'm not giving legal advice or anything. I'm just showing you how to set up this template. So if you, I just come in here and press command all. So press in here and press, I'm on a Mac, but press command and hold A uh, or just press A and you can delete this. So you delete all that stuff in there and then I'm just gonna paste the new one. So I pasted the new one. So I just, I just went and copied it from my Word doc and pasted it in here. And so this is a this is a demo company LLC. So maybe if this was me, I would come in here and change this to optimize IS LLC and come in here and change all of these. If you're using a demo one, make sure it matches up with what your company name is and all of that. So all of this, make sure to edit it, just edit the basic text It'll be really easy for you to come in here and just come in back in and edit if something changes or if you want to change a service agreement that has not been yet sent with the API. But basically what you'll come in here and do, so for this one on this date, this is going to be something that can be pulled in through the automation from your back end from say you're using Airtable for this. So what we're going to be doing is to put a placeholder field, what you do is you come over here and put placeholder so for this one, you can just click that and put placeholder one. So we want date to be, so maybe we'll put date one to signify that this is going to be a common field that's filled out through this. And so every time we put date one in these curly brackets, what that means is in the automation, then we can pull in date one from the automation and it'll give us a spot there to put what from Airtable do you want to be put in date one. So it's really easy to do stuff like that, but we'll come down here so you can add all of your contract stuff. Again, don't use this example because it's not uh, not filled out or anything, uh, but I'll show you how to set it up and everything like that. So we're gonna keep on scrolling down here. This is a pretty lengthy contract. I don't, I'm not gonna suggest to have any of these clauses or not have any of these clauses. Uh, this is just one that I downloaded from the internet for this example. So if we keep coming down here, at the bottom, what you would see is like the signatures and all of that, all, all the agreements. So for this, you can just go ahead and delete this. You have name here, you have company, you have date and everything. So for the date, 
what I would put is another placeholder and I would call that date one. So that date one is the same as this first date. So date one there matches date one here. So now you only have to fill pre like prefill one field from your air table instead of two. And then for the name, what I would do is I would come in here and add another placeholder. So, or for this one, since it's not your company, you could, you could, you could prefill this from the client, which I would encourage you to do just to save them some time. So I guess we'll do client one. So we'll bring in their name. We'll also bring in their company. So we'll say company one. And then the signature, this is something you can delete because it'll have them sign it at the bottom. So now we have everything for their company filled in. And so for this now, what you can do is you can include the name of your company. So this it would be Optimize IS LLC. Oh, I guess I would, I would include the, my name there. So we'll include that in the company instead. So there's the company and then here's my name. And so I think to make this look a little bit cleaner, I'm gonna enter these so you guys can see everything. So for this date, again, we'll pick the date one. So we'll include that placeholder field here. And I'll, actually you can also type this in. So if you start typing in these curly brackets, you should be able to put, yeah, just like that. You can just start typing in between there. And so now this date will be this date and this date will also be there. Something to note is it does put a date on when they sign it. So you can see when they signed it. And then if you just want to include like a picture of your signature in here, you can do that. So if you come over here and insert an image, I don't have a, my signature as an image on my desktop right now, but I would just come in here and include that. So now what you'll do is you'll come in here and you'll add a signer field. So for the signer field, what you want is their signature. And so if you didn't want to pre-fill their name for them, what you could do is you could do a text input right there. And I would actually come in here and copy this stuff, delete it. And then after this, you would come in here and paste it right there. So now for the date and everything, if you want them to fill in this stuff, you can add these as signer fields. So do another text input for the company. And if you have this in here, you can just delete that and then for the date, what you would do is you would delete this date in here and you would come, scroll down on this little drop down here for signer fields and put date there. So they're going to be able to pick the year, month and day. And now what I would do is I would come in here and make these required. So if they're blue over here, they're not required. But if you come over here to this, you can change it from mandatory no to mandatory yes, and that'll change it to red. And for this mandatory no to mandatory yes, as well as for the date mandatory no to mandatory yes. So now I'm still gonna bring in the date there, but, and I would also put in my signature, but what I would do here is I would add the signature place. So if I bring myself over here, so when they click the sign button at the bottom, you actually won't need to add that in here. That's a common confusing thing. So I can show you what that'll look like because it'll just be at the bottom of the contract rather than being a new field down here that you have to input. So once you pick all this stuff and you include the fields that you want them to fill out, then you can just click save up here. And so now I'm pretty sure if we go to the preview, we can scroll down on here and right here in their email that they would get, they would get the email asking them to sign this. You can just, they would just click sign here and it would have their name um, because you would pre-fill that from the automation, they'd be able to just click sign there and that's all. So once you input whatever fields you need them to input in here, I would try to keep this to a minimum, but whatever you need in your consulting agreement or whatever e-signature automation you, you're looking for, I would include that in there. So again, to recap some of these placeholder fields, you'll use these little curly brackets Make sure to have your contract all set up so like obviously don't have like demo company LLC and all of that makes sure you customize the contract to be what you want. But to use this template, what you'll do is just add these signer fields over here. You can also have multiple signers, but I'm not going to go into that in this video. This is basically just for one to one. And if you need some of this e-signature template and specifically the API automation setup in your business, 
You can click the link in the description and request a consultation from me or someone on my team to set these documents up for you. Uh, with whatever template you already have, we can set it up so you can pull in different information from Airtable depending on say what program you're giving them or what services you're offering them. You can make that really dynamic with some automations that we set up from Airtable. So if you found value in this, a lot of times this kind of a process happens in a client onboarding or an employee onboarding process. And so if you're interested in some other automations that you could do in the onboarding process, whether for a client or an employee, you can check out this video right here and you can see a whole automation on how to do a lot of these onboarding processes without you having, all you have to do is essentially check a box in Airtable and it will start this onboarding for everybody any of your clients or the people on your team that you just hired. So check that out. And without further ado, I'll see you there and have a great day.